Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Catherine and this is So Much Sewing. So Much Sewing is a channel all about sewing. It's all about my sewing adventures, the things I sew for myself, sometimes for other people, but mostly for me. I am completely obsessed with sewing, so I presume you are too, which is why you are here. If this is your first time here, I hope you like my content and I hope you will consider subscribing and liking and hitting the notification bell and if you are a returning viewer thanks so much for coming back you know I appreciate your company I really enjoy the chats that we have in the comments below so please do keep those coming um, but anyway so this week is just a bit of a chat really I have got a few things coming up that I wanted to tell you about and I do want to show you two makes uh, recent makes of mine. I did some testing for Appalachia Sews, two new dress patterns of hers, so I'll show you those. But I just feel like I've got quite a bit going on and I wanted to sort of um, chat to you about the things that are coming up. Um, um, yeah, first of all, the timing of my videos, because I'm sort of all out of my normal routine, my videos seem to have been going up on a Sunday anywhere from sort of early Sunday morning through to Sunday evening um, so that's kind of suited me quite well and I think I might continue that going forward so I hope that doesn't upset anybody unduly but that's just kind of what's been going on. Um, a couple of things I've got coming up is for the first time ever I'm going to be part of the vlogging tour for So Frugal and So Yellow for Endo. You've probably seen these videos um, in previous years. Jess is the person who runs the So Yellow for Endo and it's all about raising awareness for endometriosis and you sew something yellow or yellowish. She's not too precious about how much yellow or what kind of yellow is in the garment. Her main push is just making awareness for endometriosis. So I'll be part of the vlogging tour for that. And I will also be part of the vlogging tour that's in March. And also in March, I'm part of the tour for the Sew Frugal, which is run by Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Sam from Frugalissima. I think this might be the third or the fourth year they've done it. But anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. I've never been part of a vlogging tour before so but I'm really really looking forward to getting involved. In my vlog last week I talked about the Lola dress by Sew With Mickey that I made. This is it behind me here. I've made it in a very lightweight merino knit fabric that uh, I purchased a long time ago um, precisely for something snuggly in wintery a base layer you know a snuggy base layer for winter and so I made the um, Lola dress out of that this is the, the pattern here I will apparently it's going to go live on her website within the next few weeks so I'll keep you up to date with that but um, as I've been chatting with Marie from so with Mickey and I sort of explained to her all about the changes I made with this dress here. I'll link that video up here and I'll also link it down below because I did make quite a few changes to this pattern. Um, well, it was a bit of a journey. So I ended up making some changes, but putting back other changes, reversing other changes that I'd made. So have a look at that if you're interested. Um, and it's basically just about a knit dress and how I made it fit me. As I was chatting with Marie about this pattern, she said, would you please try it with the front shaping? I have taken the front shaping out and left the back shaping in. So that's this has been cut on the fold. But there is shaping in the front here and in the back. I left the back shaping in and I left the front shaping out. I cut it on the fold, so thereby giving me more room across my sort of upper tummy and my tummy area, because that for me is my problem area. And Marie said to me, oh, I love what you've done. It's fantastic. And she was actually really stoked that I was so in love with this dress and that um, I feel like it's a wardrobe 
basic that I can build a wardrobe around it. She said that's exactly what her intention was with this dress, that you would have this pattern and you would make, you know, 10 of them and have them in your wardrobe in all different fabrics. She actually made one in a stretch denim and did lots of top stitching down the front seam and down the back seam and everything. So I haven't seen that uh, um, and, you know, I haven't seen a picture of that, but it sounds amazing. I, I really love that idea. So as I was chatting with her, she just said, can you please, or would you mind, rather, she said, would you mind putting the front shaping in, even if you reduce the shaping a little bit, but please put some in because I think you will probably be surprised with the result and you probably will like it. So I'm going to do that. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do that. I've got some fabric in mind. Uh, she said use a double knit and I don't have a lot of double knit in my stash. It's not something I really sew with. Um, but I do have some, so I'll try it. I'll give it a go and I will report back to you on that when I have done that. So that leads me on to something that I've got on my cutting table at the moment, which is the Pattern Emporium Songbird Duster that I'm making in this amazing forest green viscose knit. It's an EcoVero, highly sustainably made fabric from Pattern Scissors Cloth here in New Zealand. It's 290 GSM, so it's very hefty. But look at that amazing drape on there. So this, oh, this is actually the cutout piece. This is the back piece for my um, Songbird Duster. And that's going to be a duster that I wear over my Lola dress and other things. There'll be loads of things I can put this with, but um, that's what I'm sewing at the moment. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get to um, work on it today, but um, I am actually going away next weekend to my niece's wedding, so I need to pre-film probably two videos, one to cover the weekend I'm away and one to cover the weekend that I am back, but because I will have been away the weekend before, I, of course I won't have had any sewing done. So don't know whether I'll get to work on it today or not, but um, yeah, this absolutely lovely. And as I say, I think that will go with a bunch of stuff in my wardrobe as well. It'll go so nicely with this um, merino dress just as another layer that's not too heavy to go over my merino dress, just another warmer layer to give an extra warmth and um, this also will be good in the autumn months before we get to the winter over um, potentially another Lola dress that I make out of something m more lightweight and yeah so many things I have in my wardrobe that that duster will go with. So this duster is pretty amazing because it's got so many options as the pattern emporium patterns always do. You can have a tapered sleeve, you know, a, a slimmer fit tapered sleeve or a very flared sort of kimono-y sleeve. The option I have chosen is the semi-flared, so it'll be fuller, so I can wear it over jumpers and things. It'll be fuller and just a little bit shorter, sort of a kimono-y type look. You can also do it any kind of length you like, of course, and there are two band options. You can have a slimmer band or a fatter band. I'm going for the wider band option. Um, oh, and you can do a straight across band or you can do a sort of a, a V shape. Hopefully I've got some pictures up here to show you what the heck I'm talking about. And you can make this in woven fabric and you can also make it in knit, which is what I've chosen to do. And so there's some really amazing options. You can put pockets in or not, and I'm doing the hidden pockets. So yeah, really great pattern. And um, I'm looking forward to getting this made up. Like I say, it'll be great for autumn weather as well as for the winter weather. Um, it'll be great for, you know, spring as well. Just a really handy piece to have in the wardrobe, I think. And so hopefully um, I'll be wearing that all autumn and winter over different um, sort of layers and different thicknesses and different fabric contents like wool and mm, I think you get the idea. I'm waffling. So the dresses I'm 
tested for Appalachia Sews. The Phoebe dress, I tested this uh, around Christmas time. You'll see by the pictures, I'm standing in front of the Christmas tree. So that was a little while ago, but and I have put the Phoebe dress up on my Instagram, but I haven't talked about it yet on, um, on this channel. So this dress is just lovely my husband love this loves this dress he thinks it's one of the best things that i've made he just loves the way it looks on me um so that's always nice i mean obviously you don't sew for other people but it's always really nice when someone has got great things to say about what you have made um so this rather embarrassingly i just can't lay my hands on the dress at the moment i know i saw it just it seems like moments ago I it's somewhere of course it's somewhere but I just can't lay my hands on it which is a bit of a shame because I wanted to show you the inside yoke I love the way that is constructed that was just so much fun to do the pattern was really easy to follow um, it's got some really interesting sleeves where you have a bit of a, it's got a, a top sleeve and a lower part to the sleeve and you have a channel around the elbow here and you thread elastic through that so you have elastic at the elbow and you have elastic at the wrist as well um, just oh, I love it I really love 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 it I made it out of some um, heavyweight viscose that I had in my stash viscose crepe um, I did shorten it quite a bit because I am short so to get it to that length above my knee there I did shorten it a fair amount and I also went down a size um, I found that with both dresses I've made the um, the sizing chart given I put me in a size 16 but I made a size 14 um, because I First of all, with the Phoebe, I twirled the bodice on that and I found it was just too large at a 16. So when I made my final version, I made it a size 14. So when I then went to make Priscilla, which is this next dress, I straight away just chose a size 14 and I didn't make a twirl. I knew it would fit me because the other dress fitted so nicely and this is a nice swishy full skirt. So I had no issues with fitting at all. Uh, I made this in a silk that I had in my stash for the longest time. A really beautiful silk. Uh, I've lined, I've used some what um, voile that I had in my stash for the lined bodice. And I tried shirring for the first time. And I was really happy with how that came out. I was a little bit annoyed with the process, with this, the sharing process because you're stopping and starting and then you have to tie off all the ends to make sure that they don't come apart. So at first I did find that quite annoying but actually I like the end result. So it's, it's another like my almost long pants where I don't like the construction method for the elastic and the cuffs and the waistband but it looks so darn good that I just have to blim and suck it up and do it because you know it's the best way to do it so shearing love the effect I will probably do some more shearing um, the thing this I'm not sure what happened but my tie on the back for some reason is really close to the top of the shearing panel and I noticed in the pictures that um, other people's shearing panel was sitting a lot lower on the back than mine so I'm not sure what I did there to make that happen um, but that's fine and what else what else I think that's about it um, yeah that's about it I really love the the bodice on this I really love how it's an empire and fitted here uh, and the shearing in the back just makes the dress fit so nicely so both dresses really love both these Appalachia sews dresses so you know I'll put the links below I thought easy to sew I noticed that this dress had advanced beginner 
I think it said, which is probably because of the sharing, but the sharing instructions were so fantastic, so easy to follow. You'll have no trouble whatsoever. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with both these dresses. I nearly forgot to tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Simone top from Fiber Mood. You can make this into a dress or a top. I've only made the top, but I will, would, will, blah, blah, I will make the dress at some point. Lots of ruffles on it. I just think it's really cute. And I've made this in a fabric that I got from a, I got a remnant box of designer fabrics from a uh, clothing designer in New Zealand. It cost me $25. Actually, I'll put that video up here if you're interested in looking at it and I'll link it down below because the, it was actually a lot of fun because the, the box only cost me $25, but I got so much inspiration out of it. I was absolutely fizzing. So um, yeah, go have a look at that if you're interested. But that's what I'm wearing with fabric uh, from that box. And I guess that's what I will, I'll just leave it there for now. I was going to show you some fabrics that I had purchased recently, but we're probably long enough already on this vlog. So I'll see you next week. I hope you're well. I hope you're happy. I hope you're getting loads and loads of sewing done. Let me know down below what you're sewing, how it's going for you. Just let me know what's happening. I love to have a chat with you. So I'll see you next time. Bye.